Hallelujah. Good morning to you. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we are here to rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So whether you are here in the sanctuary with us, or if you are online, we have one goal. It's to praise and worship God together. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So we always want God to be in the presence. I always want to be where God is. I don't know about you all, but I want to be where God is. So we ask God to just come on in and take a seat and inhabit our praise. Hallelujah. So if you so inclined, please clap along. If you want to stand up, stand up too. And show God how much he's done for you and how much you want to give him the praise and the glory this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit you are welcome. Come on in. today you could have been anywhere else but you decided to come here to worship with us for that we are truly grateful we are truly grateful for this wonderful day to gather once again for those who are online thank you all for tuning in to us today we will now have our opening prayer will you all please bow your heads Father, God, your word says that where there are two or three gathered for your name, you are in their midst. We welcome your presence in this gathering today, Lord God. Please send your son, Jesus, to save us from our sins. Allow your Holy Spirit to come help us to know your ways and will. We know your presence makes a difference in our lives. Let us be the light to someone else when we leave this place. We ask this in your son's name, amen. Amen. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit you are welcome. You are welcome. Come, on in. Come on in, take a seat in heaven. I praise God of Zion, Judas Lion. We thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. 
must help Jesus all of my troubles. He is a kind, kind, passionate friend. If I but ask him, he will deliver, make all my troubles quickly in end. Oh, I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear these burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Tempted and tried, I need a great Savior, one who can help my burdens to bear. I must tell Jesus, tell Jesus Jesus can help me Jesus alone oh tempted and tried I need a great savior one who can help my burdens to bear I must tell my cares and sorrows will share. Oh, I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. I cannot bear these burdens alone. Oh, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Oh, I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus. Jesus can help me, of my burdens to bear. Jesus can help me, Jesus alone, Jesus alone, Jesus alone. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Yeah. It's not about telling your neighbors <laughs> and other people. We have to tell Jesus because he's the one that can help us. Hallelujah. Many of us think about our loves, sometimes the loves of our life, our first love, if you can remember back that far. <laughs> but we really need to think about the true love of our life who is Jesus Christ amen
the love of my life. He is the love of my soul. And there is no place, no place I'd rather be. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We love Jesus and the good thing about it, you know, Jesus loves us. Amen. Amen. No matter what we do, Jesus loves us. And when we're talking about what's, what's going on in the world and worried about things, we got to stay focused on Jesus. Because whatever, no matter what's going on, Jesus will. Hallelujah. He will. Amen. Yeah. 
Yes, he will. And yes, he will. Hallelujah, somebody. Yes, he will. Oh, I know we can do better than that. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he can. How many of you really know that Jesus can? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All we need to do is call his name, amen? Call his name. There is no other name. Jesus, I know he will. Hallelujah. And he's an on-time God, isn't he? Yes, he is. May not show up when you want him. <laughs> but he's always... Right on time. Can we sing that just a little bit? Can we sing that just since they got it started? Can we? Can y'all help help us out? Can you help us out? Oh, on time, God. Yeah. Yes, now, if you feel something and you really feel it, let's stand up and give him that that honor. Give give Jesus that honor because he is an on time God. Yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. Time, yeah. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Your friend, you may not come when you want it. Yeah. He's really right on time. He'll be there. He's an on time. God. Yes, he is. 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 An old time God. Yes, he is. Now turn and look at somebody and sing that. Turn and look at somebody. Yeah, look at somebody. Yeah, look at somebody and tell them that he's a he's in a. He'll be there. He's an old time God. Yeah. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Let's keep praising him a little bit more. Let's keep praising him a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. <laughs> All right, now. Yes. 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 Come on. Yes, he is. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes, he is. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, Lord. Yes. Yes, yes, he yes, he is. Yes, he is. Have you ever really needed him? Yes. I mean, really, really, really needed God. Yeah. And he was on time for you. Yes, he is. Yeah. Let's get a little bit of that praise in us.
Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nothing but a praise party. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let me pray with you. Gracious Almighty God, we praise you. We magnify you. We pray that, that you continue the excitement that's going on in this place, God. Holy Spirit, holy power, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my soul be acceptable in thy sight. God, you are our rock and our redeemer. In a weary land, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. The people of God said amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Amen. Yeah. Sometimes you don't know when you need to just cast that praise in. Amen. I don't know. Give it to him now. Amen. Praise God. Listen, we're going to go right into the second part of 1 Kings 19, 19, beginning with verse 11 through 13. That's what we're working with this morning. This is the second part. But let me set it up for you. Let me, let me set it up for you. Last time we talked, we discovered that Elijah was running from his past. And then this was the first time when God asked him, what are you doing here? And his reply revealed both pride and self-pity in using the pronoun they. They. How many times have we used that word they? It's their fault, God. It's not my fault. It's all on them, Lord. How many times have you used that word they? He exaggerates and he makes it look as though every Jew in the northern kingdom had turned against him and the Lord. When actually it was only Jezebel who wanted to kill him. Stay with me. And so he gets to a place where God is about to speak to him again. Somebody say again. Again, how many of you know that God will continue to speak to you? Amen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He will continue to speak to you. Amen. And so he gets to this place where God is about to open up a conversation with him again. So I want to deal with the idea, with this notion for a subject. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? And in this, this text, we're going to find out that God is using a metaphor of earth, wind, and fire. I don't want to do it that way, but earth and the, the wind and the fire to show his power. Amen. And so, in verse 11, the Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. The Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, uh, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not 
in the earthquake. Yeah, what are you doing, God? What are you doing? What are you doing? And, 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 and after the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. Elijah heard it, and he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, this is the second time, what are you doing here, Elijah? What are you doing here? It sounds like this. The Lord invites Elijah to go and stand out on the mouth of the cave. The angel of the Lord, he has given him an, uh, given him an invitation to go out and, 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 and stand because the Lord is about to pass by. And Elijah is in the cave. He's all nestled into the cave. But the Lord knows exactly where he's hiding out. Just like the Lord knows where we are when we hide. I got a few. Let's shame the devil. Let's shame the devil. Because we don't always want to do what God has called us to do. You remember the game we played when we were children? Hide and seek. Well, God is the expert when it comes to hide and seek. God will call us out hiding behind closed doors. God will call us out hiding in fear, shame. God will call us out. What are you doing here? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? You know, the experts say that uh, Arrowhead Stadium is the loudest stadium in the NFL family, they can really, really, really shake the roof of that stadium. They say they're, they're so loud that you need earplugs when you enter the arena. KC can, can really turn up the decimal to the point that it's hard to hear the play-by-play -play being announced. That's how loud it is in the KC Stadium. When we were at Bush Stadium and for the United Methodist ball night, we saw flashing across the screen, make some noise. Make some noise. You, that's by design. Make some noise. You see, the noise is made to distract the opposing team. It is it, created to do that so they, they lose train of thought. Anybody, anybody remember seeing, watching the, the, uh, one of the Cardinals game, and, and, and did you see when the pitcher for the cards couldn't hear the signal from the catcher. He, 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 couldn't, he couldn't hear. He took his cap off and he was trying to adjust the audio piece that's in the cap. And he couldn't, he couldn't hear it. And he had to call for Yachty to come up and give it to him verbally. He had to hear it verbally. Tell him, tell me the signal. And sometimes, not all the times, but sometimes, I believe the church, I believe we, we struggle and we wrestle with hearing the word of God 
I ain't going to get no help. Because we are so saturated and, and so ar around, so much chatter and noise and, and do this and do that. And God is trying to speak to us and say, can you hear me now? And then God will catch us at a time when we are just about ready to shut it down for the evening, amen, how many of you know that, that God will come to you right before you get ready to shut the evening down and he'll speak to you. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? And so he tells him the signal. He goes back to the position. And he pitches three strikes and he's out. You see, the noise around him was so high that the catcher needed to go out to make sure he would get the right signal. You know, I was looking at that and I said, there's a spiritual moment in there that Sometimes we, we find ourselves in so much around us that God will send an angel. Come on, somebody. God will send an angel to speak to you while you are so caught up in the noise because God wants you very much to get the right signal that God is about to send. I want to send you a signal of hope. I want to send you a signal of help. I want to send you some grace. I want to let you know that mercy is right on the way. And I want you, I don't want you to get it mixed up with other voices. I want you to hear that this is God and God will send somebody immediately so you won't get it confused. Anybody in here, can you say amen? Also, the noise from the crowd can pump up the home team, can it not? It, it, it does something. It stirs up the spirit in the home team, amen. It energizes the home team. You know, I often say sometimes preachers, they wish they could have that same excitement. <laughs> Uh, Sometimes we wish we could have that same excitement in the church when Jesus is about to step up and knock a home run. He's going to knock it out the park for you. He's already knocked it out the park for you. And all we're trying to do is just say, thank you, Jesus. Make some noise for the Lord. Amen. We wish sometimes we can get that decimal to move over from low to high. Amen. Make some noise. Make some noise. But. Noise also can be very distracting, amen. When young people say it like this, you better get out of my ear talking that noise. What kind of noise are you entertaining today? Is it noise to pump you up and encourage you, or is it noise that's trying to drown out the voice of God? Well, following the biblical narrative, the angel of the Lord commanded Elijah to go out and stand at the entrance of the cave because the Lord is about to pass by. And the Lord caused a great wind to pass by so strong that it tore mountains apart, but there was no divine message came to the prophet. Was there ever a time when God broke strongholds in your life, amen, moved some mountains? I don't know about you, but I know that God can move a mountain. I know that God can move obstacles. I know that God can break strongholds. I know God can tear up some stuff that the demon is trying to create. I know that God can do all of that. Was there ever a time? Then the Lord caused the great earthquake and the earthquake that, that shook the earth, but nothing came from God from the earthquake. The Lord brought fire, but the fire didn't bring a message. Here it is. Here it is. Maybe all Elijah needed to get renewed for his service, for his ministry was a fresh vision of God's power and glory. 
Just maybe all Elijah needed was just to see God, God's power. Some of us, sometimes that's all we need is to see God's mighty hand at work. Amen, somebody. That was God doing that. That and I didn't have anything to do with that. That was God's mighty hand that moved this from over there, got it out of my way. That was God's hand, his strong hand, amen, tearing down Satan's kingdom. Somebody say amen. It was God moving obstacles and tearing down demonic strongholds, destroying yokes of burden. It was God. I remember it was God. I couldn't do it all by myself. It was God. But it doesn't appear that Elijah obeyed him and stood out on the mount to witness God's power. He was nestled in the cave. And as you heard earlier, the angel of the Lord invited him to go out. And he, so at most, at best, all he did was hear all of that stuff that was going on. He didn't see it. He didn't see God's power. But because sometimes we don't obey God and do what God asks us to do or we don't step out when God calls us. Don't think that God is finished with you. Don't think that God is through with you because you didn't obey him the first time around. If God wants you and he got your number and he's calling you into ministry and he wants you to move something and he wants you to speak and he wants you to teach and he wants you to outreach and he wants you to evangelize. Don't think because you didn't do it the first time that God is going to say, oh, well, and walk away. See, that's what we do. We say, oh, well, and walk away. But God says, I'm going to hang in there with them. You got to hear it. You got to hear it. You know, I record, I remember Jesus like this. You see, it wasn't it wasn't then when they saw Jesus walking on water and coming to them. They thought he was a ghost. The disciples didn't pick up on that's Jesus. They thought he was a ghost. It wasn't, it wasn't the fish and chips that when he, after the resurrection, he was on the beach and he was cooking fish and chips. It wasn't then that they recognized Jesus. Watch this. Watch this. No, they recognized Jesus. It was in Mark 4.35. While they were in the storm, they came to really know Jesus. You know, they were in the storm. Sometimes it's when you're in your storm. Sometimes it's when you're in your crisis. Sometimes it's when you're in your situation that you will come to know. That's Jesus. That's Jesus. It's if you're in a storm, just weather the storm out because Jesus is riding the storm right along with you. It's in that most important time. God doesn't always work in a manner that's loud and, and impressive and a, a, a dramatic way. God's most powerful work can just simply be a gentle whisper. Can you hear me now? God operates in stillness too. Remember the war between the Midianites and Israel in the book of Judges chapter 7. The Midianites had 135,000 well-trained fighting soldiers and Israel only had 22,000 soldiers. The odds were not in Gideon's favor, but God works in mysterious ways. How many of you remember when the odds were not against, they were against you, Amen. When the odds are against you, it seems like there's no coming back. Well, that's when God's most powerful work is revealed, amen, when the odds are against you. Well, God told Gideon to send those home who were afraid to fight, which left Gideon with 10,000 men. 
wait a minute, what you say, God? Wait a minute, wait a minute. We're over here dealing with 135,000 trained men. And, and, and you sending folk home? <laughs> and he leaves him with 10,000 men. But God said to get in, still too many. 10,000 is too many. Watch God, watch God, watch God. Then God told Gideon to take them down to the, to the water and, 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 and I will sift them for you. Have them to lap up water like a dog. Yeah, God will tell your prophets to do some weird things. He told Ezekiel to go down and lay in a Deerberg's market court and lay on your left side for so many days and you're bearing Israel's sin. And everybody that walks by, you tell them, I'm carrying Israel's sin. And then God said, wait a minute, lay on your right side. Oh, God will have us to do some weird things. Lap up water like a dog. Oh, yes, God will have you to do some strange things to prove your allegiance to God. So God gave instructions to Gideon who, 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 who says, uh, 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 who, who, who decides who stays and, and who goes. Gideon began sifting his men until he was down to 300 men. I want to just show you the power of God. 300 men. Don't look at the church. Don't look at the empty pews. Look at who's here today. Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. It's more than enough. Somebody said it this morning where there are two or three gathered in my name. Oh, I'm number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to show you how powerful God is. Don't look at the empty pews, but look at the pews that the people are in because they're right here with you. They're side by side. They're ready to let God use them side by side. 300 men. 300 men. The Spirit of the Lord woke me up this morning about 4 o'clock. And told me to tell you, it's not how big uh, your army is. It's how big your heart is for the Lord. It's how big your heart is for the Lord. How big it is for the Lord. You see, it didn't matter to God how many well-trained men the Midianites had. Remember, in Zechariah 4, 6, it says, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. <laughs> says the Lord of hosts. We will, you will, the church union will finish what God has started. 175 years ago, we will finish what God started. Where there are two or three, four or five, six or seven, eight or nine gathered, there I am. <laughs> Don't feel you all by yourself. We need to stop telling God how big our problems are and start telling our problems how big our God is. Amen. Yes. 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 Somebody say yes. Yes. Yes, there's a time and place for when the earth and the fire. But every now and then, let me say it like the young boy, every now and then, uh, God will shake, shake, shake. Anybody remember that song? Shake, shake, shake the devil off. God will shake the devil off. He will, yes, he will. Yes, he will. He will shake the devil off. Hebrews 12, 26 says it like this. At that time his voice shook the earth but now he has promised once more I will shake not only the earth but also the heavens 22 the words once more indicate the removing of what can be shaken that is created things so that what cannot be shaken may remain amen 
What are you? What are you? What are you saying? What are you saying, Pastor? I'm, I'm, I'm simply saying that, that there's a time when when Satan will try to uh, uh, produce or introduce uh, uh, to us created things, created things that is of Satan and not of God. And, and sometimes we get tricked, we get fooled, we get bamboozled, and we follow those created things. Amen. Don't tell me you've never done it because you have done it. Amen. But God has forgiven all of us. Sometimes we follow the wrong person. Amen. Sometimes we hear the wrong things that we're hearing. Amen. That's a created thing. It's not of God. That's of Satan. Sometimes our flesh will jump out on certain things and we want to entertain that. And sometimes we get caught and tripped up into that. And then we come back because God says, I'm going to start a shaking on this place. I'm going to shake the things that are in you that are not supposed to be in you, but keep the things that are in you, make them stay. Amen. Sometimes Somebody said, thank you for the shaking. Thank you for the shaking. Thank you for the shaking. I don't know about you, but when I was a little boy, I was a little rascal. I was just being a boy. Amen. And my mama would call me and catch me, and she would shake me. I guess I'm the only one. My mama would shake me. What you doing? But do you know you could have got yourself hurt when I call you? You better. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Mama will shake you. Mama will shake you, amen. And I thank God for mama. And then when mama got through shaking you, big mama will shake you. Big mama will shake you. Well, I thank God for mama shaking me. I thank God for big mama shaking me because they shook that stuff right up out of me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But there are times when God uses still, small voice. A still, small voice. And that small voice will bring a powerful word to those of us that are listening. Can you hear me now? Can you hear him now? Oh, I can not only hear him, I could feel the presence of the Lord. Uh, that's why the psalmist says and tells us, be still and know that he's God. Every now and then, here we go again, every now and then, you got to tell yourself, sit down, be still, be still, be still. Too much noise going on, too much noise going on. Listen, our ancestors, they had it, they had it like this, hush, hush, somebody. Yeah, don't interfere with the voice of God. Don't interfere. After the wind, the earth, and the fire, Elisha heard a soft whisper. And, 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 and he wrapped his face in his mantle. Then he went and stood at the entrance of the cave. What did he do? He put his face in his mantle, his mantle, his robe. He put his face in there. It was time for him to take a second look at himself. How many of you know it's not a bad thing to take another look at yourself? Oh, come on, somebody. Oh, somebody been told you ugly. Somebody been told you got a big nose. Somebody been told you ain't going to fit in. Somebody been told you ain't going to make it. Somebody been told, oh, you ain't about nothing. Somebody been told, oh, this is going on in your life. You are nothing. You a dropout. Somebody been told, but God is saying, stick your face into your mantle. Stick your face into your heart and take another look. Take another look. Elijah, he took that look. And when he brought his face out of his mantle, now he's ready to talk to God. He's ready. And God said again, Elijah, what are you doing here? 
And, and there he goes again. Wouldn't you know it? You thought you learned the first time. You thought you got it down the first time. How many of you had to hear it more than one time? I had to hear it more than one time. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to shame the devil. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing shameful about that. I'm going to raise my hand and I'm going to let you know that I had to hear God's voice many times, amen, to get me where, I'm, where I am. I'm not where I want to be, but thank God I'm not where I used to be, amen. And it's because of God. He asked me that question and kept asking me that question amen somebody what are you doing here and there he goes again with that self-centered evasive answer I'm I am the only one left this this is a teaching moment this is a teaching the I am the only one left makes it look as though he was indispensable to God's work mm -hmm. y'all know what I'm talking about he was the only one that could do the job that God had called him to do. Indispensable. And sometimes people think that they are the only ones that can do the work. I ain't talking about you, I'm talking about your neighbor. Sometimes we get it in our heads that we're the only one can lead the parade. We're the only one can beat the drum. We're the only one can march. We're the only one can sing. We're the only one can lead the church. Not so. Not so, somebody. Give God a hand praise for the... When actually no servant of God is indispensable. Did you hear me? No servant of God is indispensable. Even when it looks as bad as this, watch this. Jesus said in Matthew 9, 35, the harvest is plentiful. But the workers are few. <laughs> sounds nice, sounds nice. Sounds pastoral. Sounds... Theological, but what did Jesus mean when he when he said that? Well, we know that Jesus traveled throughout the cities teaching and preaching. Get this, somebody, teaching and preaching the gospel, and the crowds followed Jesus. And so he referred to them as a field ripe for harvest. A field ripe for harvest. Translation, you see, many people are ready to give their lives to Jesus. Many of your friends will come back to the church, back to serving, back to worshiping God. The problem is they can't hear you. They're not hearing the voice of God over the noise that they're dealing with. And as a church, we must Talk over the noise in their lives. Talk over the noise in the community. Talk over the noise and the nonsense. When the church begin to talk over that spirit of timidity, when we start talking over whatever it is telling you you're not good enough, when we talk over that, then when the Lord says, can you hear me? Somebody will say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I can hear you in the storm. Yes, Lord. I can hear you in the rain. Yes, Lord. I can hear you in my pain. Yes, Lord. I hear you. I can hear you now. When I was a kid, I gave you all got up. Got some pictures when you came in, hey amen. I just want to have a little fun with you if I can. When I was a kid, I had a lot of backyard parties. You, you might see me in there and you might not. If you look real hard, you'll see me in there. I'm a little kid. I'm, I'm in one picture. I'm about six years old, hey amen. But we had backyard parties every time you would look up. Everybody came, even folks I didn't want to be there, they... It's my party. <laughs> and they, they came anyway. And, and, and it, it was just folk that, 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 uh, that just kind of just rubbed me the wrong way. Uh, we had noisemakers. Amen. You know what noisemakers are. Oh, I had to go back and get my. See, that gets you right. If that don't wake you up. Uh-oh. -uh.
We were given noise makers. Think with me. Think with me. Have some fun with me. Anybody remember playing with noise makers and at the parties? Amen. The, the little the screamers and all of that, and they blow it out in your face or sneak up on you and bloop. And I. We, we had noise makers. We, you were given uh, noise makers, and you were told to make some noise. And then all of a sudden, you were told to stop and be quiet. Uh -huh. You were stopped because a very important moment was about to happen. Because the birthday person was about to speak. The birthday person, the one who we were honoring, had something to say. And we told everybody, put the noise makers down. Put it down. Put it down. Everybody had to put the noise maker down. They had to put them down. Well, I want to tell the church, just like then, we had to put it down. It's time to stop with the noise. Turn the noise down. Turn the volume down. Because God is about to speak. Jesus, he's got the floor, and he's speaking. God has something to say. And he's going to start off by saying, can you hear me now? God is speaking. God is speaking. God is speaking. Do not put a period where a comma goes. God is speaking. Amen. Can you hear me now? There are people who are around you ready to listen, learn, and love if only someone would lead them. The voice that's saying, can you hear me now? Lead them to that voice. Can you hear me now? Show them how to hear from God, how to listen for that small, still voice. God can still hear us over our giant-sized egos and our presumptuous pride attacks and our self-centeredness. And, and the question is for you this morning, can you hear him now? Can you hear him now? Are you willing to listen to a new voice, a new spirit? Because God said it again over and over in Isaiah, I'm doing a new thing. It's not where I missed it or I'm here. He's going to say it again. Can you hear Hear me now, now that you are here with him. Anybody remember Verizon? Of course you do, because some of you are using Verizon right now. Well, you know somebody. Verizon, the commercial. Can you hear me now? I like how the TV ad showed the man moving far away from anything and anyone. And, and, and he was saying, can you, can you hear me now? How many of you have, have been on the phone and, and you're driving and you're having a, a normal conversation and then all of a sudden you get it up, can you, it stops and you, and can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe this side has experienced that before. I don't, I don't know. I, you know. Give me your prescribed because I want to. Yeah. So have you ever been driving and, and all of a sudden you just lose, you lose connection. You just, you lose connection. Amen. You can't, and you have to dial the phone all back over again because somehow you just, it just dropped the call. Anybody ever experienced that? Amen. I want to say praise God this morning because it doesn't matter how far away we move from God. God can always keep the signal strong. God will always keep it on. God will never drop the call. God will always, all we need to do is listen for when God says, can you hear me now? We'll always have a strong, strong connection. Well, this is somebody's blessed day because that's how God operates with those who are serving in ministry. You remember when Jesus left the disciples, he left the noise, the demands, and uh, all the requests just to hear from the Father. He left ministry. He left healing and teaching and preaching and went to the mountaintop to pray, to be with the Father. If I can just take a moment and stretch my, my sanctified imagination, the prayer probably sounded like this. Father, Father, can you hear me now? I'm not in the valley. I'm on the mountaintop. God will allow all of us to take some time out so we can hear him. And you find your mountaintop. 
you find your peaceful place. You find your sanctuary. And tell me if you don't hear from God when God comes with that small and that gentle whisper. Can you hear me now? Every now and then we need to move away from distraction and destruction. Move away from CBS and NBC and NSNBC and Fox. We don't need to look at the 5 o'clock, the 6 o'clock, and the 8 o'clock, and the 10 o'clock news. Just one of them because guess what? Whatever the 5 o'clock is saying, baby, I bet you the 10 o'clock going to say the same thing. Move away so we can hear from Jesus. Move away from the foolish talk, phone gossip. Move away and then stretch out our hands to thee and say, Father, I stretch out my hands to thee. And then sing that song that we know so well. I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour, I need thee. Bless me now, my Savior. I come, I come to thee. I need thee. Can you help me this morning? I need thee. Stand up if you're going to sing with us. I need thee. Have you ever needed the Lord where you got to stretch out your arms and you're going to sing to him? I need thee. Whoa. I need thee. Come on, you all. Come on. Come on, Denise. Yeah, come on. Now we're going to sing it together and we're going to sing it like we mean it. I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Come on, church. You know how to do it better than I can. We're going back old school. Yeah. I used to, I love hearing this song. Sing it like you really mean it. Y'all remember it? You remember it now? Is it coming back? Bless me, Lord. Bless me, Lord. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with a little praise. Oh, I need thee, Lord. Do you really need them? Do you really need them this morning? Do you really need them? Every hour. Every hour. I need Jesus. We need Jesus. Oh, bless me. Bless my neighbor. Bless my sister. Bless my church. Oh, bless the ushers. Oh, bless the greeters. Yeah, I come to thee. I come to thee. Now let's really do it again. Let's do it this time like we really mean it. I need, I need thee. I need, I need thee. thee. I need thee, Lord. It's that, it's that petition right now. We're petitioning God the best way we know how. Every hour, God. Every hour. 
I'm going to call out. I'm going to call out. Oh, bless. 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 My, my Savior. Because I need him. I want him. I can't live without him. I'm coming to you, Jesus. I'm coming to you, Jesus. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Now, we're going to test this thing out. We're going to test it out because my grandmother used to tell me, when you hum, when you hum, the devil don't know what you're saying. When you start humming that song, when you, when you start humming, devil don't know it, devil don't know it, devil don't know it. Now, yeah, can you hear him? Huh, let's, yeah, yeah, now hum it, let's hum it. Let's hum it, everybody, all over, all over, just hum, just hum. Ah, just hum. That's where they did it. Left it with a time. Oh, I hear the old saints coming out of them. I hear them coming up. Out of, I hear them coming down from heaven and they're spreading wings and open up their mouths and they're humming this song. Hum it with them, saints. You know who they are. They're aunties and they're uncles and aunts and mothers and cousins and, and children. Amen. They, they're humming. They're humming this morning. Yeah. Mm. I hear Miss Henry. I hear Miss Henry. Yeah. Yeah. I hear Leola. I hear her. Yeah. I hear Sylvester. Yeah. Yeah. I hear him. I hear him. Oh. Mm. It up. Let's lift it up. Let's lift it up. Yeah, lift it up. One more time. Lift it up. Lift it up high. Lift it. Lift it. Lift it. Sing it, children of God. Sing it, children of God. Sing it, children of God. I need thee. I need thee. I need thee. I need thee. Yes, Lord. Yes. Every hour, every hour, I need thee, God. I'm calling you, Lord. I'm calling you, Lord. We are calling you, God. We're going to open up the doors of the church. You may be seated. We're going to open up the doors of the church. Keep that going. Keep that background going. Keep that background going. Yeah. We're going to open up the doors of the church right now. We're going to open up the doors of the church. Amen. We're going to invite anybody spiritually, physically into the house. Amen. The house of praise. Amen. The house of praise where prayers go up and blessings come down. The doors of the church are open. And let me say it spiritually, uh, Jesus Christ, his arms are open right now. Uh, whoever I'm speaking to online or in the sanctuary, if this is your first time with us, then we are going to invite you to come and partner with us. 
on this journey, on this sacred walk that we're having. And when we walk together, when we walk together, we can listen for each other. When he says, can I hear you? Can you hear me now? We'll listen for each other. We're inviting any and everybody who maybe stumbled in the journey. We all have fallen short. But God, God's grace will allow us to get back up and dust ourselves off and continue the journey. I thank God for that this morning. I don't know how many times I, I could tell you that I, that I failed or well, somebody pushed me. But I can tell you, I'm here today to tell you that his grace and mercy, it really works. Amen. It really works. Amen. And so somebody today, somebody may be discouraged. Maybe you got a bad doctor's report. Well, don't just lay on that report because there's another report. There's another report. A great doctor who have never lost a patient. There's another report coming in. Amen. There may be somebody today just, I want to rededicate my life. I want to rededicate my time. I want to rededicate my prayer life. I want to rededicate my time with Jesus. I want to rededicate my time of giving. All of that. I'm speaking to you right now. You know, we're not so perfect. We're not so perfect that we can't renew and rebuild our lives. The doors of the church are open. The arms of Jesus, they're open. They're open. And if you get that notion when you leave out of here, you hold on to that notion that, that, that you hold on to it and, and, and pack it away for Monday morning and, and revisit that again on Monday and just say, Lord, I'm still here. I'm, I'm here and I'm still listening to you, God. I am still listening to you. I can hear you, Father. I can hear you. The arms of Christ are open. The doors of the church are open. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give God a hand praise. And we're going to ask that Robin Browning come on up. And she has a few announcements to share with us. Amen. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. I hope you all had an excellent worship experience with that. Now we will come into the time of our giving. You have two ways to give. You can give through our website. That's at unionmemorialstl.org. Hit the giving button, whether you're on your phone, that's in the center, or on a desktop computer that'll be on the upper right. Please follow all instructions until it says your giving has been received. You can also, if you are here with, um, in the sanctuary today on your way out, your, the ushers are there with their baskets for you to leave your uh, tithes and offerings for that. And as far as another announcement, too, with our giving, as you know or may not know, if you're new here, next month, 176 years, we will be celebrating this church. With that, we are asking for our members $176 to pledge for every year that we are here in this community serving. That is for adults, for the youth, that'll be 1760. For the children, that'll be 1076. Now, if that seems like a stretch to you, don't let it be. God is going to work it out for you to give. Give what you can. But if you want to break it up, you can break it up in two months. You can want to, if you want to do 88 this month, as an adult, do that $88 this month, November. You can 
finish the rest out with 88 so it won't seem like too much of a stretch. With that, I know we can do it. This is no November 20th. We will celebrate. These pews look good. I'm glad you all are here. Amen. Now we're going to need to fill it up again and have somebody else, some more people sitting next to us. So you will be charged to come on and bring somebody else out so we can celebrate um, Union Memorial all the way from in some in a slave owner's house when we were uh, when we did not have any freedom in a house in a wood shack house all the way to Leffenwell and Pine and then now we're here that's something to an accomplishment no one no, not too many churches can ever say for themselves so again bring somebody else because that is a faith that looks up which was our theme we will now have our prayer for our offering. Please bow your heads. Heavenly Father, whether we have a little or we have much, help us to always live open-handed in this tight-fisted world and find our greatest joy in following and serving you. Help us to use this money and all that we have for the building up of your kingdom here on earth. This we ask in your son's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Robin. Praise God. Let's give a hand praise for the information. It's getting ready to celebrate 176 years. Amen. And every day should be a celebration. Should it not? Every day should be a celebration. But I just want to share something. I know the leadership team are about to come up, but I want to share something with you all that we are planning to have Kids Kingdom coming soon. Kids Kingdom is nothing but a children's church coming soon. And we're going to use the chapel for Kids Kingdom. Amen. And we're getting some people together now, and uh, they will be uh, safe, sanctuary certified. I know that's the old language we use, but the safe gathering, that's the new language. We'll have all that in place, but we want the children uh, to have their time too. Amen? Amen? Amen. Praise God. That's a, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. So bring cousins, bring children, bring uh, anybody that, that, that's of that age. Amen. We can fill this church up again and be the mighty oak that God has created us to be. Another thing I want to share, a new date for those who attended the August workshop, calendar ministry workshop. We're going to be looking at November now. We're going to be looking at November 5th. We want you to please come back out. You will be notified, those who were there for the first. This is the half. This is the sweep up. We're just cleaning up some stuff so we can go into the new year with a big bang. But on that first workshop, we had a very good, we had very good reviews, very good reviews. I mean, people were excited about what they were hearing, and uh, out the, uh, the evaluations were outstanding. People, again, were excited about the content, excited about the follow-up, uh, and uh, excited about the next steps, where we're going, and how we're going to look and present ourselves in 2023, okay? And, and we've got help doing that. We, we, we're just gearing up and making sure we put the right foot first. Amen? So you know who you are. You will be notified by email. But I want to be able to put this out here for you. And I also want to say this, okay? I want to say this, that I am here. If, 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 you, if anybody is interested in knowing more about or understanding the simplified model leadership board, please, 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 I'm going to have a sign-up sheet out there in the Narthex, and I'm going to ask you to put your name down. And I am putting together a conversation with the, with the board chair, and uh, we're going to be entertaining conversation. So if there's anybody in the church, anybody, no question is a crazy question. So all questions will be honored and will be respected and all of that. But I want to start this with you. I want to publicly say this in front of you and those who are online, okay? We're putting together an awesome, awesome packet for, approved by the Holy Spirit for the year 2023, okay? So I just want everybody to know, if anybody have questions, how the simplified model work, the NLDT, Nominating Leadership Development, says committee, but we say team, Nominating Leadership Development Committee. It's been around ever since Methodism been around. Amen. Dr. Hayward can attest to that. 
He used it. He had to use it because it's a part of the Methodist structure, leadership structure, okay? We want to be able to explain all of that, okay? We don't want anybody to be left in the cloud. Amen? Amen. 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 Let me get another amen. 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 Put your hands together for God one more time. One more time, if you have not figured out uh, where I am in that picture, you can take it home. <laughs> Y'all probably already figured it out. <laughs> but if you can't figure it out, take it home and then give me a call. Would you stand, please? Yeah. Oh, we've got the leadership coming? Okay. Leadership, they're calling for the leadership team to come on up. Before we dismiss, this is October is National Clergy Appreciation Month. We will now have a presentation from our board chairperson, Mr. Collins, and will all other board members please come to the front. Good morning, Union. We stand before you as part of the church and excuse me a little bit when they were humming that song, kind of reminded me of uh, my father, some of the old days, and he walked around just humming. I never knew the words, I never asked, but it really kind of hits home to hear the choir when you start doing the hum. Just it really means a lot, it takes us way back. The pastor touched a little bit about the simplified version, so I'm gonna give you a quick example right before your eyes. A few weeks ago, the board met, and we discussed some issues that related to trustees. On that day, we had on our trustee hat. We then discussed some issues regarding finance. When we did that, we had on our finance hat. Today, we stand before you as PPR. As Robin mentioned, this is National Clergy Recognition Day. So we want to come before you now as your pastor parish relations committee. Our names are the same. Our focus is the same. We wear different hats for different roles. So I hope that helps everyone just to recognize that. Maxine? Good morning, church. Good morning. good morning, family. You guys know how I am about that. Good morning. Um, October is Clergy Appreciation Month. This month reminds and invites us to show appreciation to, as I call your name, please come down for front, Pastor Antonio Settles. Reverend Alice Blaylock, and to honor our pastors who have retired from years of faithful service, Dr. John W. Hayward, Jr., Reverend Ronald Graham, and Reverend Ardella Johnson, who isn't able to be with us. And let's continue to leave, lift each one of them up in prayer. We want to say thank each of you for answering God's call. We celebrate you for your faithfulness to God's mission and ministry currently and in past years to this church and community. We appreciate your sacrifices and care for God's people. We thank you for your faithful study of God, thankful, faithful study of God's word and your weekly, weekly preparations to share timely messages. We appreciate the countless leadership hours and administrative meetings you now attend and did attend during your years of ministry wrestling with preventing, preserving Union Memorial's 176 years of ministry and moving our church into the future. To Pastor Settles, we can shower you with many accolades, thanking you for all the big and small things that you do each and every day as our pastor to take Union Memorial to higher heights. But we'll simply close with, God sees your faithful services, and so do we. 
You are appreciated. <laughs> to God be the glory for these amazing pastors that have taken union in higher and higher directions throughout these years. Thank you, thank you. May God continue to bless each and every one of you. Let's give God another hand praise for the work of the, of the leadership board, the leadership board, and for the work of the people, people who are laboring in the vineyard. Amen. We give thanks for all of you for what you do and how you do it. Amen. Thank God for the faithful believers, for the redeemed. Amen. Let the redeemed say amen. 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 We give thanks. Amen. Would you please stand? I think all hearts and minds are alike, amen. We wanna make sure that Reverend Graham, he gets his, his gift. Miss Josephine, would you, we're gonna ask you lay back a little bit. He's still in the bathroom, okay, okay. Any first time guests? Any first time guests with us? All family, all family, all family. We praise God for the family. Praise God for the family, but we want the family to tell somebody about your experience today. I know I'm meeting with all of those uh, new disciples uh, that, that uh, met with me for the dinner that we supplied for you. Would you meet me right down front? I just have something to give you and uh, we'll be able to go home. We praise God for today, amen. I want you to come back for part three, part three of this Elijah ministry, amen. Elijah was an amazing man. He was an amazing prophet. As I read more about him and discover, this man was a true man of God, but like him, like any of us, we work, we work so hard. We, we work tirelessly, and we work, we work, we work, and we need God, amen. And we need to hear from God, amen. Anybody with me? Yeah, we just need to hear from God for our children, amen, for seen and unseen dangers. We just want to pray for God, you know, praise God. It's a blessing to be able to stand here and look at you, amen. amen. It's a blessing, amen, because today was not promised to you. Yesterday for today was not promised, but it's a blessing, amen, to gaze and see you. It's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. To be in your company, amen, in the company of the redeemed, amen. We praise God. We praise God. Every head bow, every eye closed. Gracious Almighty God, we thank you, Lord, for the gift of servitude. Serving you, Lord, is all we want to do. Serving you, God, with our faith. Serving you with our whole mind, body, and soul. And we give thanks to you on today, Father. 
And we ask that you would cover us as we prepare to leave this place, God, but never from you. Now, by the grace of God and the love of Jesus Christ and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide in us now and forever. And all God's children said amen. amen. Say amen one more time. Amen. Go in peace and let the peace of God be with you. Listen to how they take us out. Just want to praise you, Lord. Forever, Lord. Forever, Lord. And ever. All my